Ordruff was basically a concentration camp where they literally assassinated and killed just about everyone that got there. And those who were not killed either escaped or were transported back to Buchenwald. And when we got there, we drove through the town. The town was completely deserted. All we saw were white sheets hanging from the windows, which obviously they were surrendering. And we roamed around, and finally we found the camp, which was about a mile outside of town, very close to the town. And the reason I say a mile is how close it was is because later on when we, when we got involved with the civilians in the town, they all denied that there was ever a camp up there. They didn't know about it. Now, it's hard to envision that a whole community would not know there's a camp up there a mile away. They didn't want to know about it, but they certainly must have known about it. Anyway, we, the four of us, we got outside the camp. We noticed that the gates were open, and there was nothing happening in there. So we were a little wary about going in. So after about 20 minutes, I don't know, I guess we got brave enough or stupid enough, and we decided, let's go in and see what's going on. And what we saw were bodies, literally hundreds of bodies strewn all over the place, some of them stacked up like cordwood, stacks of wood about four or five feet high. We saw a few open pits where bodies were thrown in there, some of them covered with lime, some of them uncovered. A lot of the bodies were in prisoner uniforms, some of them were literally naked, some of them were partially naked. It was just an overwhelming scene. We walked into some of the barracks and there too there were bodies. The one thing that stands out in my mind to this, to this moment was we walked into one barrack and there were bodies all over, they were all dead. And here was one man sitting up in a, in a bunk leaning up against the wall. And at first we thought he's alive. So we went over and we realized that we couldn't tell if he was alive. And none of us were smart enough or brave enough to feel his pulse. So we just looked at him. And with hindsight, he was either in a complete shock or he was dead. We don't know. And we walked around there for about probably close to two hours and it was just overwhelming. It was so overwhelming that we didn't want to stay and we couldn't leave. You know, it's one of those things like, it's almost like grabbing a hold of an electric wire and you, you, you don't want to hold it, but you can't let go of it. Finally, we decided we've got to get out of here and let somebody know 